Hello everyone, my name is Paul Yuin and I'm going to be presenting some cryptanalysis results on Spook. This was a joint work with Patrick Derbez, Virginie Lallemand, Mariana Yaplasencia, Leo Perrin, and André Schrottenlauer. Alright, so Spook is uh, an authenticated encryption scheme with associated data that was submitted to the NIST Lightweight Crypto Competition. And it is currently part of the 32 candidates that made it to the second round. It was designed to achieve both resistance against side channel analysis and low energy implementations. It has three subcomponents um, the Sponge One Pass mode of operation, S1P, a tweakable block cipher, Clyde 128, and the Shadow permutation, which comes in a 512 bit version and another one of 384 bits. In the Spook specification, uh, the security analysis of the mode of operation used, S1P, relies on the assumption that the permutations are random and that they provide collision resistance. Um, now it turns out that we were able to challenge this assumption by exhibiting distinguishers for the permutations, which we then later used to find a practical collision on 128 bits of the output. And in doing so, we also solved the first mathematical cryptanalysis challenge on the permutation that was proposed by the designers. So what exactly did we do? Um, well, first we found practical distinguishers, one on the full six-step version of Shadow 512, and another one on a step-reduced version of Shadow 384 that covers step 1 to step 5 instead of step 0 to 5. So five steps instead of six. We also found an attack against the integrity of Spook, reduced to steps 2 to 5, um, so that makes 4 steps. Now all the analysis are practical and they have been tested, and the source code is available online. Okay, so let's talk about Shadow first. Shadow combines uh, bundles. Now a bundle is a 4x32 array of bits, so 128 bits in total, and if you combine four of them, you get a shadow state for Shadow 512. For the smaller version, Shadow 384, uh, you only need three of them. So that's for uh, a shadow state. Now let's talk about the encryption part. Both versions uh, iterate six steps. Now one step is made of two rounds, round A and round B. And in between those rounds, there are some round constants additions. So here's one step for Shadow 512. Um, Shadow 384 is exactly the same except for the debox layer, which I'll show very soon. So round A first applies a 4-bit S-box on each column of each bundle. Then the L-box transforms the first two rows and the last two rows of each bundle. Round B starts with the same layer as round A, but has a different linear layer that we're going to denote by D. And the purpose of D is to provide diffusion between the bundles of the state. To be more precise, each bit of each bundle is modified by the application of a near MDS matrix. And between those rounds, some constants are added. Um, they are generated using an LFSR and are added to column I of bundle I. Um, so that's one step. Um, and for a complete shadow, you need six of them. Now let's have a look at the only component that differs between the two versions of shadow, um, which is the D layer. So D. Um, is the only diffusion layer between the bundles. Um, so for uh, Shadow 512, uh, D is actually an involution. So for each bit of each bundle, uh, the value is updated by XORing the same bit of the three other bundles. Uh, that's not the case for Shadow 384, um, which is part of the reason why our distinguisher doesn't cover the full version. Um, so looking at this D layer, we wanted to see if there was a way to um, exploit the similarity between the functions applied um, on each bundle. Uh, and for that, we used uh, truncated differentials, which are a variant of differentials in which only a portion of the difference is fixed, while the other part is undetermined. 
So for instance, if we start with two shadow states that are equal on the last bundle, but we have no information whatsoever on the first three, um, then actually some properties are still kept after encryption. Uh, and more precisely, the first three bundles uh, turn out to be equal um, if we invert the D layer. So here the zero symbol denotes that the two bundles are identical and the star symbol means that the difference between the bundles is not determined. So in order to study the differences and similarities in the bundles, one thing we can do is rewrite shadow using super S boxes. So here's a shadow step uh, like I've already shown. And what we can do is regroup the first four operations of the step. Um, so the S layer, the linear layer L of round A, the constant addition uh, that is done on the different positions for is each uh, super S box and the S layer of round B. Um, so we're going to consider all these operations as one super S box. Uh, so we're gonna, let's call it sigma zero. And uh, obviously we can do the same thing for the uh, three other bundles. Um, and now for the D box application layer, um, we can also see it as one big linear permutation layer that's operating on, on the full state. So just like that. So what we have now is an SPN structure with four 128-bit super S boxes and a linear permutation layer D. Um, oh, the round, consist, uh, the round constant addition after round B is not represented here, but they are uh, implicitly considered. So now with this new representation, what we can uh, do is, uh, for instance, consider um, two shadow states that are equal on the last three bundles. Well, after the super S boxes, uh, we know that the last three bundles um, are still equal. Then after D box, since each bundle is updated with the XOR of the three other bundles, we know that the first bundle uh, are equal. Now in the following, I will present some of the properties that we exploited in our analysis. Um, so one interesting observation is that even though um, the bundles uh, go through different S boxes, super S boxes, um, because of the round constants, it's possible to have a shadow state with four equal bundles that is transformed into a shadow state of the same form at the output of a step. Uh, so that's something that we call I identical states, whenever we have I bundles that are equal. Let's see, uh, let's see what happens when we start with a four identical state. Uh, how can we end up with another four identical state at the end of the step? So here are our four, bund four bundles um, and they are equal. And whenever one difference is introduced, it will be highlighted in color. So here's our initial state. Um, after the S box layer, the bundles are still equal. Same thing after the L box layer. Now we're going to add the first constants. Um, so let's call them C. Um, so C is added to column I of bundle I. So we've introduced four different values at, at column I of bundle I. Then we apply the S layer of round B. So now the values are changed, but the positions are the same. We still have four different values. Now the D layer is going to spread those differences um, to the other bundles. And finally, if we add um, the round constant, uh, let's call it C prime, then we have a total of eight different values. And what we can see here is that if we want the input state and the output states to be equal, then um, this highlighted equation needs to be satisfied. Now this happens with some probabilities that are round dependent, um, and that's because the S box the S box transitions need to well exist. Um, so for instance, what we can see here is that uh, starting from a four identical state, we can 
only recover another four identical state at the end of step two and three. Um, and that's because for the other steps, the transitions don't exist. This also works for uh, three identical states or two identical states. And um, the choice of the positions that are of the bundles that are identical doesn't matter. As long as the positions are the same in the input and in the output, the probabilities are valid. All right, so now that we've seen this um, interesting property, I'm going to talk about uh, our distinguisher. So for shadow 512, we can exhibit pairs of states x, uh, x prime with a zero difference in the last bundle, such that the states after encryption are equal on the first three bundles um, after inverting D. So generating such pairs for a random permutation would require about 2 to the power of 64 queries. Um, but in our case, uh, we only need 2 to the power of 16 calls to the permutation. So this distinguisher uh, is based on two properties. Um, first, there's a probability one truncated differential, and two, there's uh, the propagation of three identical states. So what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to start at step two, and uh, what we need is that the first three super S boxes transition from a difference alpha to a difference beta, just like that. Um, now we're going to go backward. Um, if we invert D on the input of step two, um, then for each bundle, we need to XOR the three other bundles. So we have um, zero, 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 alpha. Then we invert the super S box. Um, so we, uh, we have a something of the form zero, 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 and a difference that we don't know. And then we do the same thing with step zero. So in the end, the, the pattern propagates uh, with probability one through steps one, then zero, and the input difference of step zero equals zero on the third bundle, as expected. All right, so now going forward, um, we need something a bit stronger this time. We need uh, to propagate three identical states. Uh, so this will be represented in the red dotted rectangles. So um, we must ensure that at the end of step two, the two output messages are three identical. Now in step three, we want uh, to keep this three identical property. Um, and as we've seen before, um, this has a probability equal to two to the power of minus nine. Now next for step four, we need differences to be the same after the first three S boxes. Um, and this has a probability equal to two to the power of minus 7.245. And I'll explain that in a bit. And once this condition is fulfilled, um, then we automatically have a difference of the form uh, star, 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 zero at the end of step five. All right, so a bit of detail. Um, so first uh, for step two, um, how, how, how do we build a pair, uh, the right pair for step two? Um, well, um, on the first three bundle, we need the same differences before the super S boxes and the same differences after the super S boxes. But there's actually more to that. We also need the states to be three identical. So how can we uh, how can we do that? How 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 are we going to choose alpha? Um, well, uh, the first thing we can notice is that uh, the impact of the constant additions is limited to the S boxes with indices in zero, one, two, and three. So the first four indices. Now, a second observation is that bits with indices 22 and 23 in each of the four input words of a super S box 
have no influence on the output bits with indices in 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, and this stems from um, the LBOX layer. So we can define a vector space NABLA such that for every alpha in NABLA, um, the XOR of sigma x and sigma XOR alpha equals zero on the last four bits. This means that if we add uh, the round constants right after the super S boxes, um, then they will cancel out in the difference. Um, and so the states uh, can be equal, um, identical. So that's how we construct step uh, the pair for step two. Um, now step three, um, like I said, is simply a matter of propagating a three identical state and that has a probability of two to the power of minus nine. Um, now for step four, um, well, we aim for a difference of the form zero, zero, zero delta at the end of the step. So by writing the corresponding equations, um, what we find is that um, these four equalities need to be satisfied and each of them has a probability of 2 to the power of minus 2.415 and once that is um, fulfilled then we automatically automatically have the required difference of the form star 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 zero at the end of step five so in total um, we have a probability of 2 to the power of minus 16.245. To summarize, um, first, we are going to select a difference alpha in NABLA. Then um, we, are, we can select a state that is 3 identical. That is going to be the state at the end of step 2. Then we can invert step 2 to obtain the input of step 2. And from that input, we are going to create a pair of state such that the difference is alpha, 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 zero. And if we go backwards to step zero, then we obtain a state, a pair of shadow states with a zero difference in the last bundle. And this pair satisfied the differential trail with, uh, a, with high probability. That is higher that, than two to the power of minus 16. So that's, that's it for the six step uh, distinguisher. Now if we were to add um, two extra rounds uh, to the complete version of Shadow to create a seven step version, um, then the distinguisher would actually extend to that seven step um, at no extra cost. Now real quick, I will just show you um, the Shadow 384 case. Um, and as I said previously, the distinguisher works from step one to step five. Um, if it could also extend to an extra seventh step, um, and in that case, it, it, it would be a shifted version of the full Shadow 384. Um, but the reason why we cannot cover step zero um, is because of D and the round constants. So the middle rounds of the attack cannot be moved um, and that's because of the round constants because we need to be able to cancel out the constants um, to propagate um, some identical states. Um, but because of the D layer we had to use um, a different path that ha only has two active bundles at each round which leads to two unknown differences at the beginning of step one and that gives no info on round zero. Uh, I'm not going to go into more details but it's very similar to what we've done previously and um, more details are available in our paper. So now we're going to enter the final part of this talk uh, which is focused on forgery. So our attack targets Spook in its uh, what is called uh, aggressive parameters, uh, which were introduced by the designers as um, an interesting target for cryptanalysis. 
and these parameters uh, specify 12 rounds for Clyde 128 and 4 rounds for Shadow 512, also 4 steps. Um, so our attack considers the Shadow permutation um, but restricted to rounds 2 to 5, so it's a shifted version. And what we're going to do is that we're going to build two different plain texts that yield the same tag using the same nonce three times. So we will be in the nonce misuse scenario, but it is allowed by the security game considered by the authors. So here is uh, S1P. Um, S1P is uh, a sponge-based mode of authenticated encryption with associated data that uses shadow as um, its underlying permutation. It has a rate of size 256 bits and a capacity of the same size, so 256 bits. The bundles 0 and 1 are the rate part and bundles 2 and 3 are the capacity part and we can't see the capacity part. In our attack setting, um, so for the sake of simplicity, we're going to consider a version of S1P without associated data, and we are only going to consider two block messages, um, so four bundles, uh, M M0 and M1. Pi is going to be the shadow permutation reduced to step two to five, um, initialize is a procedure combining pi and the Clyde block cipher to produce a 512-bit state from a nonce n and a secret key k. And finalize is a procedure that uh, produces a authentication tag of 128 bits from um, a 512-bit state. So here is um, the different show trail that we are going to use. Um, and I won't go into the details, but it's very similar to what I've shown you before. Um, in this case, we only need to propagate two identical states and um, the probability equals two to the power of minus uh, 24.83. Um, so what do we have? Um, so we have this property for pi, um, that's pi, and um, basically this allows us to find a collision on the capacity part of the state after applying pi. But um, we still need a collision on the part as well, on the rate part, um, because if we want two different plain tags to yield the same tag, uh, then we need to generate um, two messages m0 m1 and m prime 0 m prime 1 that yield a zero difference after pi so we're going to need uh, three queries to do so um, so the first one will allow us to recover the value uh, of um, the rate part after initialize so since the nonce is reused this value uh, stays the same for the remaining of the attack. Um, and to recover this value, we're going to encrypt a two-block message, so four bundles, that is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0. And uh, the first part, the first block of the ciphertext, C0, will give us the two-bundle rate value after initialize. Uh, so we're going to denote it x1, y1. So now that we know the value of the rate after initialize, um, we can generate two pairs of rate bundles, um, x prime one, y prime one, and x second one, y second one, that satisfy the, the truncated trail that we found uh, in our distinguisher. Now we need to know the value of the rate after pi, and that way by choosing the right second block of the plain text, we can cancel it out and find a collision on the tag. But first, let's recover that difference. So we're going to encrypt two messages built from the pair that satisfy the trail, XORed with the initialized value that we've recovered. And each time, the second part of the ciphertext 
C1, um, will give us the value of the rate after pi. So we're going to call this value, denote this value by C prime two, C prime three, and C second two, C second three. Now that we know the value of the rate parts after pi, well, we can cancel it by injecting it. Uh, so by injecting um, the previous ciphertext that we found into the second block of a plane. And this uh, will cancel out the rate parts after pi. And so with um, a probability equals to about 2 to the power of minus 24, um, then the internal states before finalize are equal, which means that we have a collision on the tag. So that's the end of uh, my presentation. Uh, to summarize, I have presented um, two practical distinguishers, uh, so one on the six-step version of Shadow 512 and one on a step-reduced version of Shadow 384 or the full version but shifted. And that some forgeries are possible with a four-step shadow for the S1P mode of operation in the non-smissuse scenario. As a consequence of our work, um, the authors have proposed um, a second version of a spook called Spook V2, which includes a, a new matrix, um, which is MDS this time for efficiency, um, the round constants of shadow have been changed uh, for efficiency as well. Um, and there's currently a second mathematical cryptanalysis challenge ongoing. So feel free to um, go to their website and have a look. Um, finally, um, I think our work um, defines a new criterion for choosing the round constants. Um, in a way that uh, they do not only prevent um, invariant subspaces attacks, but um, they also need to be chosen carefully um, in such a way that their effect um, cannot be cancelled out uh, in the internal symmetries. So thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, um, I guess I'll see you at the...